Calgary Flames head coach Ryan Huska has addressed a major problem for the Flames. And while this problem has been quite prevalent over the past couple of games, it's actually been a bigger picture kind of thing over the past couple of seasons. Now, the Flames might not want to be winning a ton of games down the stretch as their playoff hopes are pretty much zero, but the problem does need to be fixed in order for the Flames to be competitive in the future. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here, you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe because right around 83% of the people watching are not subscribed. So if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around the Calgary Flames, then make sure you join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We are on the road to one and a half thousand subs. We're so close to it, so feel free to come join the Flames Digest family. But like I said, today's video revolves around kind of some issues that the Flames have had over the past couple of seasons. And Ryan Huska is getting a little bit, you know, he wants to address it as the head coach. He's in a position of power. So let's look at Huska addresses a problem for the Flames. Now, I haven't totally spoiled it yet, but the problem is kind of revolving around these close games the Flames get in and not being able to finish. Now, I know for the current place the Flames are in, in their I guess rebuild, retool, reshape is that they're not going to make the playoffs. Winning does not matter at this point, but it's still nice to get, you know, stay competitive and win games and get used to winning because some of these players that have been here over the past couple of seasons, they've lost a lot of one goal games and that's not a trend that, you know, they want to get comfortable with. You need to stay competitive and you need to still win, especially when games are so close. You need to be clutch and prove you can win. So let's look in to this. Ryan Huska says not finding a way to win in close games was the most disappointing part of back-to-back -back losses. Now, the Flames did just lose back-to-back -back games, and a lot of people are fine with that. You know, obviously, they want to see the Flames win. It's always fun to see your favorite team win and stay competitive. You want to support a team that always wants to win, of course, but... Right now, the losses are okay, but that being said, it's still disappointing that Flames just couldn't quite finish, especially against Vancouver, you know, who is a major rival out in Vancouver. It would have been a huge win against the top team in the West, and then Buffalo, they kept it close into the third, but could not win the game there. So let's continue this article. Similar for me as it was in Vancouver, I mean, you're in close games, you have to find a way to win, Huska said. I guess that's what I'm disappointed about. It's 1-1 with 10 minutes left in the third. You want to find a way to win those games. Of course he'd be disappointed with this. Every coach wants their team to win. I mean, even organizations that haven't outright said it but are committed to a tank mode, not that I'm saying the Flames are, but organizations in general that do that, who's the first person that gets chopped? It's always the head coach. So the coach always wants to win. Of course he's disappointed with these losses. I think Huska's job is safe going into next year. I know Flames fans always call for the head of the head coach. Well, look at that. Head of the head coach. And the Flames have hired and fired so many coaches over the past decade, 15 years or so, we could say. But I think Huska's job is safe here. And of course, he should be disappointed with these losses because these were winnable games for sure for the Flames. Again, doesn't matter too much if they win them in terms of standings. In fact, a lot of people want the Flames to remain in the bottom 10 just to have a shot at maybe a top five pick and absolutely a top 10 pick for sure, which I completely understand as well. I mean, I'm more on the side of I want to see the Flames win no matter what, but you know what? Of course, Huska would be disappointed with these and I'm sure the problem will be addressed. Good teams execute even when they're being outchanced in the worst of ways, and as of now, the Flames are not that team. That doesn't mean they can't get there, but this season is the start of the journey to that destination, and the Flames coaching staff understands that, even with as much as they want to make the postseason. Now, this, of course, has to throw in if, you know, the players want to make the playoffs so bad, the organization wants to be in the playoffs, but they know that's not going to happen. That's not happening this year. There's a chance it could happen next year, but there's also a chance the Flames could be even more of a retooling, reshape, rebuild mode next season, and they might be even further down in the standings and get an even higher pick. But you know what? The Flames, I think they will address the problem because last season, let's talk about last season for a second here. The Flames probably should have made the playoffs in at least a wild card spot last year, but they were absolutely addicted to the Daryl Sutter point, the, the extra point out of regulation and overtime or the shootout. I actually found an old little stat here. So this is from last season on the losing side of 31 goal games, including an NHL leading 17 in overtime or a shootout. The flames ended up two points out of a playoff spot. 
Here's a quote from Toffoli back when he was a flame. I know a lot of people miss him. If you look at the overtime and shootout losses first, if we could win half those games, we'd still be playing. Flames forward Tyler Toffoli said. I don't remember when this was from. It definitely makes it worse. That needs to be addressed big time. This season, obviously, they haven't lost as many games in overtime and in the shootout. I mean, it's the Daryl Sutter point after all, and he's no longer the coach. But the one goal games themselves still need to be addressed because the Flames aren't even getting a point out of these games recently against Vancouver, against Buffalo. And I know the points don't matter a ton as we wind down the season and know we're not going to make the playoffs. But again, it's so important to make sure you stay competitive and to build a winning culture. Even if you know you're not going to be in the playoffs, it's so important for the players to get used to, addicted to winning, right? Look at the guys who came over last off season, not this most recent one, the one before Huberto, Uyghur, Kadri. They're so used to losing these one goal games now that they are flames and that shouldn't be acceptable at all. They need to be winning these. I'm sure that is a huge problem they will address in the off season. And a big part of that too, another thing from last year that was big was Jacob Markstrom was giving up a goal on the first shot of the game in what seemed like almost every single game. And that's been addressed a little bit. Markstrom this season has been able to keep the Flames competitive and has won the Flames some good games. I mean, we've seen Wolf do arguably the same thing, not to the same level Markstrom was when he was fully healthy and happy playing in Calgary. But I think it's very good that they have these goalies that can keep them in games, but not quite clutch enough. They are doing everything they can, but not quite clutch enough to win those one goal games. So they need certain scores to step up in order to win those one goal games. Look at a guy like Japani, so cold right now. It would be nice if Kuzmenko could get going. It was nice when Sharky was hot, but you know, if Sharon Govich can get it going again, the Flames could be even more competitive and get this going. But either way, I'm glad Huska is addressing this problem and I really hope it does get fixed, even if the Flames are still in a retool rebuild next year season. Now, let's look into tonight's game. The Flames are going up against the lowly Chicago Blackhawks. Um, they are out in Chicago to face Connor Bedard, which is always very fun. I'm sure he will be the player to watch for the Blackhawks. That one goes at 6.30 p.m. tonight. You can watch it on Sportsnet, of course. It should be a fun one because you know, Chicago, they've actually been playing some decent hockey lately, but I'm assuming that they're still kind of in a bit of a tank mode. Um, but now that it looks like San Jose is almost guaranteed to get that bottom spot of the league, maybe Chicago will keep it more competitive. I'm sure Calgary will too. It should be a winnable game for the Flames, of course, which is always very, very, very amusing to watch. I always enjoy watching the Flames win, of course. So hopefully they can get a good one going tonight. It should be very fun. As of right now, there's no guarantee of who the starting goalie will be for the Flames. Um, at the time of this recording, I would assume Jacob Markstrom gets the nod, even though it's against a lower opponent, but get Markstrom in those games to, you know, kind of end off his season and maybe his Flames career. We'll have to see, of course, but either way, it should be a very fun one. I know I will be watching and uh, yeah, feel free to comment anything during the game or whatever on any thoughts and I can address them in the following video or anything like that. Now, with that being said, the last thing we'll do in this video is actually the comment of the day. So on some of the other Digest Media channels, they have been doing a comment of the day um, towards the end of the video for quite a while now, actually. And, you know, I thought Flames Digest, it would be a great place to implement that as well. So from now on, there will be a comment of the day on each video. We might get a more special graphic going than just the chapter bar there. But it could be good. It could be bad. It could be a really insightful thought about the Flames. It could be something about the channel. It could be anything. But I had to start it with this one from yesterday's video from Pat the Ripper. I grew up in Vegas and been a Flames fan for a long time since Hawk and Lube. Who wasn't? My favorite player and of course Iggy. Great, great guys. One of my bucket lists is to go to Calgary and see a game. I want to catch a game with this dude, Mark. That's me. He is so positive and loves the Flames. He's right about that. Me and my wife will pay for the beers, of course. Sounds like an absolute pleasure and I sincerely appreciate a comment like that because you know what? I do try and stay positive, positive and optimistic about the Flames. I don't want this to be a channel where, you know, you just hate on your favorite team or anything like that. And I do appreciate that. It'd be a pleasure to welcome you to the Dome and get some Dome Foams, of course. If you have never been to a game in Calgary, Dome Foams, that is the staple of going. That is the beer there at the Dome. Absolute staple of going to the game you need to get some dome foams down the gullet in order to enjoy some of the brutal flames hockey that has been played but either way it is still a blast and who doesn't love watching the flames 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're new around here. And of course, enjoy the game tonight. Go Flames, go.